Okay students, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about preparing your Formula One car for painting at the house and we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the techniques that I'm going to be using to spray paint my car. Um, I'm going to be using two colors but keep in mind one color is just fine. It's not about the color scheme, it's more about the application of the paint. So first thing I want to talk about is something that you may or may not have had an opportunity to use in the classroom and some of you recall using this product this is lightweight spackle. If you're finding that you do need to spackle parts of your project and you did not have an opportunity to do it in class, this is definitely recommended, but a very cheap alternative is something you probably remember me talking about. You got it. Toothpaste. This does have very similar consistency to spackle. It can be used to fill in your pinholes Keep in mind, this is not spackle, but it's better than nothing. Um, I would, as we did in the classroom, wait at least 10 minutes after putting a very light application of either spackle itself or toothpaste, and then re-sanding your car once again with 220 before you start the actual process of applying a base coat. Now, applying a base coat was something most students did in class. But if for some reason you did not have that opportunity, you could purchase primer paint at Lowe's Home Depot. I would purchase the smallest container you can find since you don't need much. Another option is if you have flat wall paint at the house. Flat meaning it's the opposite of glossy. It's a dull finish. The lighter the color, the better. That could also be used as an alternative to purchasing primer paint. So once again, make sure, hopefully, your pinholes have been spackled, then sanded, and then at the same time you've taken an opportunity to apply a base coat, hopefully in class, and if not, you have an alter alternative to do it from home. Now there's one other option. If for some reason you cannot apply a primer coat, you don't have that product, here is a possible solution. Some spray paint now comes both with paint and primer. This could be uh, an answer to that problem. So once again, you weren't able to apply a base coat or primer paint, sand your car thoroughly, and simply start painting with a product like this. This is a Rust-Oleum product. There's another product that you'll also find called Valspar, but once again, you should not be spending more than three, four, maybe five dollars on a can of spray paint if you have to go out purchase it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start painting this car. Now this car here has a base coat applied. This was done in the classroom. This car here, as you can see, no pinholes are visible. Those were spackled and resanded. So this car has definitely been prepped. Now let's keep in mind that before I paint this car, you should have gotten a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. Hopefully you have that and hopefully you have thoroughly sanded this car after it's completely dried. That means it's bone dry, sanded thoroughly with 400. As you've heard me say in class, this should be smooth as glass if it's been sanded well. The one part of the project which you have to really pay attention to is the inside of these airfoils. This is called the end grain. You typically find these get much rougher than the rest of the car. Make sure you've taken that sandpaper, kind of curl it with your thumb, your finger and make sure you work out any of those rough areas inside the airfoils, inside the side pods, and as always the entire car should have been thoroughly sanded with 400 after applying the base coat and the base coat has dried and it is bone dry when you sand it with 400. So let's get down to business. Here's a technique I talked about in class on how to hold your car. This is simply a piece of paper rolled up into a tube that was then put into the back of your CO2 cartridge hole. You can see this works extremely well. Not only do, do you have full control of the car when it's drying upside down, you can also hang this, clip it to something. Once again, keep it away from young siblings, keep it away from your dog. This is a toy, so make sure it's out of sight. It does smell when you're done, so do make sure it's either in your garage if it's outdoor, hopefully in a protected area, but at the same time, put it someplace safe 
and let it dry. Now, to get this, let's once again start with this. So this is just a piece of paper. We're going to roll this piece of paper up into a tight, tight, tight tube. I would highly recommend doing this on a surface like a table. Much, much, much easier. You want to make sure that tube is extremely tight at first. That looks pretty good. Take your car, place this in the back of the CO2 cartridge hole, and once you let go of the paper, just let it expand like so. And once it expands, it's going to hold tightly onto your car. Okay? I would not try to hold this upside down just yet because once you apply some paint, the paint will actually help the paper stick just enough to the car so it does not want to fall off when you are hanging it to dry. Now, speaking of hanging to dry, make sure you have planned before you start painting where this is going to go when it is dry. I have shown you in class, my recommendation is to use something like a binder clip or a clothespin in order to hang this someplace. Once again, indoors is fine. It does stink a little bit. Garage is great or some part of your house or outside as long as it's in a protected area. You don't want to get any rain, snow on it when it's outside. And once again, keep it high, keep it out of sight. So we're going to start with color one. This is red and I have black. If you do more than one color, highly recommend start light because you can always cover the light color with the darker color. I'm going to start with this. Keep in mind, you just don't start spray painting. A few things we discussed, you have to shake the can vigorously for at least five to ten minutes. I've already done that to save you time in this video. You can hear that ball bouncing around mixing up the pigment. Here's how you test your can. Pop off the lid, keep that close by. Before you practice on your car, always practice on something like either newspaper, maybe inside of a box, maybe a piece of wood. Lay down paper on the floor if you need to, especially if you're in your garage or your driveway, or if you're standing out in the snow or the grass, you should be fine. But first, practice on something other than your car and test the paint to make sure it's coming out well. If it's been shook, sh uh, shaken correctly for the right amount of time, it should come out with just a nice stream, as you can see here. If it's sputtering, you either have old paint or that nozzle could possibly be clogged. Take a pin, do not face it towards you, clean that nozzle carefully, try it again. Hopefully you have good paint. Once again, if it's sputtering and you've cleaned that out, you might have bad paint. As we mentioned in Blackboard, remember this information is on my Blackboard page called Formula One Spray Painting Facts. Two things to remember. Keep the can moving. Never stop and spray. You'll get build up. Number two, keep the can at least six to nine inches away. I'd rather be too far away than too close so that you don't get build up. Remember, Practice, practice, practice on something other than your car so that you have a good understanding of how this works. And don't forget, people can help as long as you're doing a majority of the work. I'm going to try to get close enough here so you all can see what I'm doing. I've got this shaken up. I've tested it. I've practiced. To put my first coat on, one part that's kind of tricky is getting inside these airfoils. So you're going to see me kind of change the angle. I'm going to step back just a little bit. Hopefully I'm in the frame here. Going to start by keeping the can far away. You'll notice that a lot of times I will just do spurts. I won't sit here and just do this. I usually do not do that. I just do spurts of paint. The name of the game here is to remember you don't just put on one coat. You typically put on at least maybe two, but it's two light coats, not two heavy coats, and not one thick coat. So I don't expect everything to get covered on my first shot just enough to hopefully get the majority of the parts covered with the paint. You'll see I'm changing the angle. Every time I change the angle, I'm able to get inside my airfoils, inside my side pod. And I'm going to stop here. If you kind of take a look at what I've done so far, look at the sides, look at the bottom, look at the inside of my side pod, okay, look at the inside of my airfoils, okay. Don't expect to get it done on the first shot. Remember, that's a nice, light coat. I recommend waiting at least 10 minutes. It's colder, tends to take longer to dry. At least 10 minutes before you apply that second coat. Now, once again, to save you time, we're going to say 10 minutes have gone by. We're going to say this looks like it's drying. And we're going to go ahead and apply a second coat just to kind of hit the spots I, I've missed. 
So here we go. Once again, wait a little bit longer. Change the angle. And make sure you get a nice, clean, smooth, not heavy paint application. Okay? If you think you need a third, that is fine. The name of the game is not to add too much mass to your car. The name of the game is to make sure you're getting the inside of all these pieces and parts. And once again, we want to be a nice, even, even paint job. Now, that's color number one. You'll notice I actually went just about halfway and then some. I'm going to do a fade. So I'm not going to pick up color number two. Obviously, much darker. This has already been shaken once again before I came out here to shoot this video. So this should already be mixed, but we don't test that on our product. We first test it by just spraying it. Okay, get a nice stream there. That looks good. As always, you kids doing more than one color, you should practice fades. You should practice blending on something other than your project before you start on your car. Here comes color number two. Okay, I'm going to start from the back, work my way to the middle make sure I'm in frame here. Here we go. Once again, look how far I'm keeping the can back. Once again, I'd rather you, re I'd, re I'd recommend a student being further away than too close because you can always add more paint. You can't remove it easily if you screw up. So I'm keeping myself a little bit further away. Some cans actually do tend to come out a little bit stronger, which is why you need to get familiar with what you're using by practicing first. You might notice that one color comes out differently than the other color. It's just sometimes brands, cans, they can be a little different. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and keep working the inside of these airfoils, side pods. And you know I get this question a lot. Do I paint the bottom? Of course. The whole product should have been painted. The bottom, the sides, yes, even the back of the car. Everything is painted just like when you painted your primer or base coat. Now at this point, I would wait another 10 minutes or so, then I'd add another coat of black. The black's looking pretty good, but there are a few areas that still need that second coat. I can see a little bit of the base coat coming through. Once again, we'll say 10 minutes have gone by. Let me go ahead and add that second coat. You might see funny things happen in very cold weather. You might see the paint start to bubble up just a little bit. Okay, when you start to bring this product back indoors or inside at some point to let it dry a little bit further, all right, you tend to start to see those things go away. Okay, temperature does funny things to paint. Okay, I'm like it looking pretty good. I don't want to overdo it. I really like what I see here, a nice, beautiful blend. You could obviously see I'm using a glossy paint. I'm a big fan of glossy. It looks cool, looks nice. This also helps reduce a little bit of that, what we call fluid friction. Nice, smooth surface. Okay, once again, inside of my parts, bottom, back, the whole car is complete. So as I mentioned before, you should have thought about what am I going to do with this thing once it's wet? What am I going to do? Am I going to hang it or am I going to place it? So hopefully you've thought about that before you started this process. Don't forget a few things I mentioned already in the video. This information is on Blackboard. It's called Formula One Car Spray Painting Facts. Also, if you make a mistake, too heavy, you got a drip, you have to let the paint dry. That could take hours. Resand, either start rough, 120, maybe 220, but always end with 400. Stop once you either see the base coat and or once you see wood. Stop, reapply the paint, the spray paint, and then hopefully you get a better paint job the second time around. You always know I'm an email away if you got any questions or concerns. Good luck to you and we'll see you in the classroom ready to race. Good luck.